Oregon football is just getting started in the 2024 recruiting class, and things are set to pick up in a big way with official visits starting next month. And we're back like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish podcast. In case you're new here, I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks over on Fan Nation, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. It is Friday, May 26th. And we are coming to you with another edition of our Oregon Recruiting Hour. Kind of a little bit more of a broad, uh, you know, take, broad focus on Oregon football recruiting. Not entirely dissimilar to my Taurus's take, uh, which you can read over on DucksDigest.com. New edition just published this morning. In today's episode of the Ducks Dish podcast of the recruiting of the Oregon Recruiting Hour, I'm going to be taking a look at some big names for Oregon football and the recruiting trail on the recruiting trail, both in the 2024 class. And heck, I'm even going to throw a 2025 guy in there that is definitely worth uh, a little bit of discussion. But with all that being said, before we get into the start of the pod, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for me and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on a future episode of the Ducks Dish podcast. It's free to subscribe to the channel and is a tremendous support to the work that I'm doing working to, to bring you guys the best Oregon football recruiting coverage I possibly can, and it's greatly appreciated. And go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on Oregon football recruiting as we head into a very important month of June with official visits getting kicked off for the Ducks and many other programs across the country. So the first guy that we're going to be talking about on today's episode, we got to talk about Aiden Breland, the five-star modern-day defensive lineman, Uh, I wrote a recent update that I just posted uh, last night on uh, Ducks Digest talking about how Oregon is really making up some ground here with Aiden Breland. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to repeat too much here because I talked about him and a couple other modern day guys in the swinging and not the swinging for the fences. Oregon going all in on modern day in 2024. But Oregon really has cemented themselves as a serious contender for Aiden Breland. You know, he just dropped his top 10 last week, but, uh, you know, Oregon's going to get an official visit. Georgia's going to get an official visit Miami. And then also the newer addition is, is Texas A&M. So with Aiden Breland, he's going to be visiting Oregon on that big June 23rd official visit weekend. Tons of huge names are expected in Eugene on that weekend, but he talked about his most recent trip to Eugene and how it was kind of more exclusive more personalized and how he made that trip with modern day teammates, Brandon Baker and and Jack wrestler among others. But I think the interesting thing with Aiden Breland is that I really didn't think that Oregon was that realistic of an option for him, you know, not too long ago, but now they've really come on strong here. They're going to get an official visit. Uh, They just got him on campus uh, for an unofficial visit. And I think that Dan Lanning, Tosh LePoy and Tony Tuioti are are a real three headed monster in this recruitment that, make Oregon a, a, a realistic option for Aiden Breland. And the crazy thing is that you're saying Oregon, I'm saying Oregon is a realistic option for a number of guys from, from modern day, right? You have Aiden Breland, you have uh, Brandon Baker, you have Jack Ressler, who I just put in a prediction for uh, Oregon to land. He's going to be making his college decision between Oregon and Boise state in early June. Then you also have cornerback Zabian Brown also in the mix. Running back Nate Frazier also in the mix. Ducks battling Bama and some other big programs for him. But I think Aiden Breland's an interesting one because I think it's kind of really been a shift. Maybe I'm a little bit late on it, but I still definitely wanted to talk about it just as, as far as Oregon becoming a legitimate option for him. And I'm not going to say that Oregon leads right now for Aiden Breland, but They've certainly made a move in my eyes, and I think that they're going to be involved in Breland's recruitment until the very end. He's got a decision timeline that's looking like the beginning of the 2023 high school football season. All right, um, who are we going to talk about next? Let me see who I have queued up in my highlights. Let me see if my computer can cooperate with me. 
Um, let's see. So yeah, I talked about Brandon Baker on the last episode, so I don't think I want to talk too much about him. Let's talk about another offensive lineman, though, that has kind of, uh, you know, emerged a little bit more for Oregon here in the 2024 class. Let's talk about Preston Taumua. I hope I'm saying that right. Preston Taumua. He's an interior offensive lineman, six foot four, 320 pounds out of Aia High School in Hawaii. I hope I'm saying that right. Aia High School in Hawaii. 247 Sports Composite has him as a four star recruit. Point nine one nine five, number 222 player nationally, number 13 interior offensive lineman, and the number one player in the state of Hawaii. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, just a little disclaimer, these are his uh, sophomore highlights. He didn't have uh, a full 2022 uh, tape. It was all individual games, so I just wanted to get you guys a longer video to use. But what's the deal with Preston Tamua? Well, I think the recent update that we have is that Oregon now finds themselves in the top five for Preston Tamua as they're really trying to kind of sort out their options along the offensive line. I talked about Brandon Baker. Uh, I've talked about Eddie Pierre Lewis in the past, Devin Brooks. Going to talk a little bit about Isaiah Garcia as well in this episode. I also put in a prediction for Oregon to land um, uh, Jaquan McRoy out of the state of Alabama, but Preston Tamua has put Oregon in his top five along with Nebraska. Arizona, Auburn, and Alabama. So some seriously heavy hitters there. Obviously, the SEC schools draw your attention uh, aside from just Oregon. But this is a guy, you know, I think that he's been on Elite Terry's radar for a while now because you'll remember Elite Terry got his first shot to coach his own offensive line room in Hawaii. And I think, you know, the big thing with Hawaii is that it's – uh you know, not like a powerhouse state, but there's definitely some talent coming out of that state that's going to power five schools year after year. And it's definitely growing and it's a state that's worth looking into, but maybe it kind of flies under the radar because it's so far away, you know, from the mainland. Right. Um, so I think that just goes to tell you that, you know, elite Terry is he, he's going to know the the big names in Hawaii. And then you also have other names on the staff, like Tony Tuioti who spent five years coaching at Hawaii, who played his college football at Hawaii, got his call, his start in coaching at Hawaii. Um, so he's another guy who knows Hawaii and, you know, the various islands very well. Um, and that's part of the reason that I think Oregon, you know, should be viewed as a serious contender here. And, um, you know, Preston Tamua was actually crystal balled to Oregon by Blair Angulo of uh, 247 Sports. You know, he does a great job and I've seen him out on the recruiting trail. Um, so, you know, Blair has, you know, obviously seen enough to, to, you know, go ahead and, and log a, a pick for Oregon. Um, but the interesting thing here with, with Preston is that, you know, he's not just a PAC 12 caliber, you know, offensive lineman. It's not just Oregon and, you know, a handful of, of other PAC 12 schools here and there. You got Oregon and then you've got the SEC, which I think is very telling to the caliber of, of offensive lineman that you have here with, with Preston. I think he, he, you know, he has some, some reps here at, at tackle from his sophomore season, but two, four, seven lists him as, um, uh, as well, actually, I guess I don't really know exactly where they're circling in these highlights, but he's listed as an interior offensive lineman. Um, you know, I think right now he's looking to be Oregon's top option at center, perhaps in the 2024 recruiting class. You know, I talked about guys like Devin Brooks and Eddie Pierre Lewis being in the mix, you know, Devin Brooks is a guy from, you know, from Clackamas in state. Uh, Oregon's been in the thick of that recruitment for a long time uh, with guys, uh, with schools, I should say, um, like Washington and USC. So I, I think he's going to get, he has sent an official visit to Oregon. I don't know the date off the top of my head. Eddie Pierre Lewis, you know, crazy athletic. If you've seen videos of him running, you know, 6'4", 3'15", 3'20", and he's a sprinter in, in track and field, which is just, I'd say, unheard of. Um, you know, in modern athletics, just having an offensive lineman that also sprints and is good at it and is beating people like that's insane. Um, but all that to say, you know, Preston has the the build that I think Oregon's looking for, has the right body type, um, you know, to really, you know, handle those massive nose guard, zero tech kind of guys that are going to line up directly over the center. 
Um, and he's got good mobility too. You know, he's not just a big guy. He's a big guy that can move. He's got great feet. He can get out in the open space in the screen game. We know that Oregon's going to do a lot of screen stuff with, uh, with Will Stein as the new offensive coordinator. So I think that, uh, you know, it, it definitely makes sense. You know, I, I wrote about it uh, yesterday on DucksDigest.com. I think there's so many reasons that this pick of uh, Oregon for Preston Tomua makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, Oregon's also recruited a number of Hawaii, uh, Hawaii offensive linemen in uh, in recent years, right? You know, you got 2022, you, you got uh, um, Kavika Rogers, uh, Kavika Rogers, excuse me. And um, he was out of uh, Kaapa, I want to say. And then you also have Iapani Lalaulu out of Farrington. And his older brother, Faope, is on the team. So Oregon's very familiar with the state of Hawaii, especially if you look at the offensive line position. So, um, you know, that gives that probably gives Preston a, a sense of, you know, comfort, a sense of home away from home. You know, having all these, uh, you know, ties to the state of Hawaii on the roster, on the coaching staff. I think that definitely helps Oregon's cases. Oregon's case here. Uh, I don't really know about a decision timeline for Preston, but I know that he's going to be uh, taking an official visit to Oregon is the latest that I was hearing. So Oregon's going to get a great shot to make their best impression on him when he makes it out to campus for that uh, official visit. Um, what else do we have to say here? I mean, I just think that it's, it's good for, you're seeing so many top tier or just really, really quality offensive linemen that are heavily considering Oregon and that shouldn't come as a shock at all. I mean, I, I would not be surprised at all to see a Terry just absolutely tear things up on the recruiting trail. Cause you know, recruiting's more or less, you know, it's not exactly this, but it's kind of a young man's game, right? You know, the guy who recruits the hardest is oftentimes going to win the guy who can make the best relationships. And I am already hearing that he's hitting it off with a number of recruits, you know, Brandon Baker, obviously the guy that I've talked about a lot lately, I think Oregon is, is solidly in the lead for him. Um, you know, after my, my most recent check-in with him out at Modern Day after that visit to Oregon this weekend. Um, and I think that, um, you know, kind of a similar deal with, with Preston. I'm not ready to say that they lead, but I think someone else, you know, Blair obviously had has seen enough and, you know, heard enough to say that Oregon leads. And I think I can definitely see why he would uh, think that that's the case. Let's talk about another offensive lineman here. We're, we're really hitting offensive line hard here uh, on the Ducks Dish podcast lately. But, you know, Oregon has two guys committed already in Fox Crater and Trent Ferguson. And, and they're, uh, you know, looking to, uh, you know, try to get some more uh, offensive linemen in the fold here in, in 2024. So Isaiah Garcia, what's the deal with Isaiah Garcia? Well, he just released a top 10 on uh on thursday no no no. i think it was on wednesday uh yeah on i don't know tuesday sorry tuesday may 23rd isaiah garcia dropped a top 10 top 10 consisted of nebraska ucla miami alabama usc oklahoma oregon washington stanford and utah so tons of really good schools you know utah just got a commitment from uh uh, Isaac Wilson, Zach Wilson's brother, uh, he's out of Corner Canyon in Draper, Utah. So a big pickup for um, Whittingham and the Utes. But, um, you know, I was able to do a little bit of digging on Isaiah Garcia. And, you know, he, he, he whittled his list down to 10. But I think there's three serious contenders that really stand out in that recruitment from what I'm being told. That's Oregon, that's USC, and that's Alabama. So some big schools that definitely are able to create some separation in this, um, you know, in this recruitment. Um, I think that's big. Um, and then, you know, this is the state of Utah. So it's a, it's a state that Oregon has prioritized, you know, very well on the recruiting trail um, in, in, in recent years, right? This was a pipeline state for Oregon even before Dan Lanning got to Oregon, right? You're thinking the Sewell brothers, you're talking about Jackson Powers Johnson, you're talking about Jeffrey Bossa, uh, Harrison Tagger before he hit the portal, Avante Dickerson, not from Utah. Avante Dickerson is from Nebraska. So I got a little bit, uh, a little bit confused there. So that's on me. Um, but all that to say, you know, Oregon has done a really good job recruiting the state of Utah, and, um, you know, I think that the Ducks are in a really good spot here. 
no decision timeline for Isaiah Garcia, but you know, just a little bit of a scoop there, a little bit of intel that I wanted to share with you guys. Oregon is is definitely near the top and in that upper group for uh, Isaiah Garcia. So he's someone that I had to talk about for sure. Okay, so that's that's the offensive line stuff uh, for right now. I mean, there's there's definitely a little bit more that I want to get into on this episode. Not going to be necessarily a longer episode, but let's talk about Justin Williams. Justin Williams, if you've been following, uh, you know, Oregon football recruiting for a while now, um, you know that he's the he's the name. Justin Williams is the name for Oregon football at linebacker in the 2024 class. Just recently got five-star status out of Conroe, Texas, um, you know, Oak Ridge High School. The dude moves like nobody else. Um, and just at the linebacker spot, it's pretty pretty special. He's a former safety. Um, I don't know why he's not showing up when I search his name in huddle. Um, let me see. Can I do that? Uh, nope. Okay, let me just go through Twitter. Um, so Justin Williams, he's working from a, a more or less, you know, three schools right now, um, as he kind of works his way towards a decision, you got Oregon, you got Georgia and you have Alabama. So that's a really, really good group for any recruit. But the thing about Justin Williams is that he took his fifth trip out to Oregon for the spring game. And the more I think about it, I, I just don't – I have a hard time betting against Oregon in this recruitment. Um, even though, you know, that said, I'm, I'm acknowledging that Alabama and Georgia are about the hardest competition that you can ever go against for any recruit. But what's the difference with Oregon? Well, Oregon's been recruiting him longer. Um, you know, Georgia and Alabama didn't even make his top six or no. I think Georgia might have made the top six, but Oregon's been recruiting him longer. They've hosted him on more visits. And honestly, part of the reason I feel like this is going to be so tough for another school to come in is I think the Dan Lanning factor. You know, it's it's interesting to see how much mileage Oregon's going to be able to get out of this. But, you know, the the Georgia, you know, first round NFL draft or, you know, first round or the NFL draft factory for that 2021 defense that still carries a lot of weight for Dan Lanning at Oregon, even though he wasn't the, the main guy. And, you know, that's a really talented group of coaches over there at Georgia. He played a big part of it. And he is one of the brightest minds, brightest defensive minds in college football. And, you know, I think he's become one of the best head coach recruiters in college football. And he's only been a head coach for a year. I mean, I was just talking to Brandon Baker earlier this week, and he, and he was saying that I don't think any other head coach is recruiting like Dan Lanning recruits. He had a 30-minute conversation with Baker on his visit to just ultimately, you know, really try to help Baker get over this idea of being too comfortable at Oregon, saying, hey, man, I understand that you're, you know, comfortable with Oregon. You know, your brother went here. You know the program well, but we're chasing that first national championship, man. No one's getting comfortable over here. We're coming to work each and every day. And, and I think that conversations like that are going to be kind of what they can use to, to help them win over Justin Williams. You know, you're the linebacker that I need in my defense to help this program get its first ever national championship. And it's interesting, too, to kind of weigh what kind of weight or importance that carries for recruits helping Oregon win their first national championship. That was something that Jack Ressler talked about being an appeal with Oregon versus being a part of a program that's already won a national championship or maybe already won multiple national championships. A lot of people on Twitter want to use that to, you know, pick apart Oregon and say, you know, zero national championships. You know, you guys have heard it for a while, but I think that that's an interesting element to look at with this recruitment because, you know, with linebacker recruiting for Oregon, this, this tape is insane for Justin Williams. If you guys are watching on YouTube, this guy is just the real deal. You got Justin Williams. You got Dylan Williams out of Long Beach Poly. And you got Kamar Matuti out of uh, Campbell Hall in Southern California. I predicted him to Oregon, I think, back in March, I want to say. Um, and then you also have Braden Platt, a guy out of Washington, super athletic. I don't really know how, how uh, good of a shot Oregon has right now or kind of where he ranks for them, but Special, special talent. 
uh, all those guys at linebacker and, and no name is bigger than Justin Williams. So I fully anticipate that Oregon's going to put the full court press on Justin Williams here in, in the 2024 recruiting class uh, to, and you know, no decision timeline right now. Um, I think it's probably looking like early, early season. I want to say Justin Williams, I've covered his recruitment, you know, pretty closely. I want to say he looked like he was kind of nearing a decision. And then now he's kind of headed towards the summer to slow things down. You know, look at Oregon again, look at Bama, look at Georgia. I think they're all going to get officials. Um, and then I know Oregon's going to battle real hard to see if they can get that final official visit for Justin Williams. All right. I have one more guy I want to talk about here on the uh, Ducks Dish podcast. Give me one second here. Um, all right. Right on. So let's talk about Anthony Turbo Rogers. Anthony Turbo Rogers in 2022, 10 games, 2,151 yards, and 27 touchdowns. 5'8", 185 pounds. He's a running back, and he's one of uh, one of Oregon's top targets, um, I think, in the 2025 class. I think he's an interesting guy um, to look at here in the 2025 class, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, well, Anthony Turbo Rogers just put Oregon in his top schools, and he's going to be making his decision very soon. Uh, Anthony Rogers placed Oregon in his top five alongside Alabama, Auburn, Florida, and Georgia. So heavy, heavy SEC flavor for Anthony Rogers, who is a very highly rated recruit um, by most major recruiting services. He just transferred to IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida recently. 247 has him as a four-star recruit, 0.9599 the number 87 player nationally, the number eight running back, and the number 19 player in the state of Florida. So you might be looking at this top this top schools list with a June 2nd commitment date and say, well, Max, Oregon doesn't have much of a much of a track record at IMG Academy. I mean, the, the main guy that I can think of, at least in recent years, is Josh Delgado, uh, who played at St. John Bosco and at IMG. Um, you know, things haven't exactly gone super well for him at Oregon in terms of just, you know, finding the field consistently and, you know, making a name for himself. But with with Anthony Turbo Rogers, there's an interesting wrinkle that you have to look at here. Like I told you, he transferred to IMG Academy. Uh, he was recently at Pike Road High School in Montgomery, Alabama. And who else do we know that is from Montgomery, Alabama? That's right. Oregon running back coach, Carlos Lachlan. Carlos Lachlan is also an Alabama native. And I think that could be part of what gives Oregon a, a you know, puncher's chance, swinger's chance here in this recruitment. Another interesting little tidbit here that I uh, actually didn't know until uh, my buddy Brooks Austin over at Dogs Daily um, covering Georgia, he uh, had an interview with, uh, with Anthony Rogers and I found out in that interview that Carlos Lachlan was Anthony Rogers' first offer uh, when he was in high school, you know, in his freshman year. Yeah, because he's a junior right now. No, no, not, not his freshman year. His first offer ever two years ago when he was at Western Kentucky. When Carlos Lachlan was at Western Kentucky, uh, Rogers' first offer was to the Hilltoppers. I think that's their mascot. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but Lachlan offered him while he was at Western Kentucky. And I think that that, you know, carries a little bit of weight even still in today's era of recruiting, you know, being that first school, being that first coach, that first coaching staff to show faith in a uh, recruit and a high school player to, to play, uh, you know, power five or, you know, division one football. Um, and you, there's one thing we know about Carlos Lachlan is that he is an elite relationship builder without a doubt. And I just feel like that's part of the reason that you can't count out the ducks here in this recruitment. You know, I'm not predicting that Rogers is going to end up at Oregon, but I'm also saying I wouldn't be that surprised um, because Carlos Lachlan has made himself such a, uh, such an asset as a coach and as a recruiter 
at Oregon, landing Jordan James, flipping in from Georgia in the 2022 class shortly after getting hired, uh, landing Dante Dowdell out of uh, out of Mississippi, out of Picayune in the 2023 class, uh, adding Jalen Lamar late in the 2023 class, flipping him from Notre Dame. Um, so there's just, and then bringing in Bucky Irving and Noah Whittington. I mean, he just has this running back room absolutely rocking. I think that he's gonna he's made Oregon the team to beat for Nate Frazier out of modern day, but they're going against some really tough schools in, in Alabama and some other SEC powers, right? Nebraska is also in the mix there with Nate Frazier. So I think that this is a really interesting development to watch for Oregon, you know, after landing in his top five schools for Rodgers. You know, he's a smaller back, but, you know, Oregon wouldn't be taking a serious look at him if uh, Lachlan didn't think that he had that toughness, that grit, that ability to own the football. That's what he talks about so much, that speed and quickness. You know, the tape certainly shows it. This dude's just a, a little a, a wrecking ball. Also has the ability to, you know, impact the game out of the slot here, running some routes, get some good ball skills. So, um, you know, keep an eye out for Oregon and Anthony Turbo Rogers here in the 2025 recruiting class. The Ducks only have one commit in the 2025 class. That's Dallas Wilson, wide receiver out of uh, Tampa, Florida. So maybe the Ducks make it two on June 2nd with Anthony Rogers. We'll have to see. Uh, certainly not going to be an easy pull from across the country, but it's early. Oregon has a lot of momentum. Carlos Lachlan's a great uh, relationship builder. So, uh, you know, maybe there's some reason to be confident that the Ducks can get the job done here. We'll find out on June 2nd. Well, that will do it for another episode of the Oregon Recruiting Hour on the Ducks Dish podcast. Tons of good updates. And uh, things are only going to get more intense and more busy as we get into the month of June. So if you guys aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel at Oregon Football Max Taurus. It's completely free, and I greatly appreciate the support. And make sure to hit that like button and stay locked in with me on DucksDigest.com for my latest written content, latest interviews with the biggest recruits in the country. we got five-star updates all over the place on uh, Ducks Digest lately. And then make sure you lock in with me on Twitter and Instagram at mtourissports. And then uh, go ahead and share the Ducks Dish podcast with your friends, with your family, with other Duck fans. That's all greatly appreciated. But uh, hey, thanks for taking some time out of your day. Talk some Duck football with me. Talk some crouton. And uh, until next time, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish podcast.